Today I want to talk about emulsions and why they are an important consideration for people that are home formulating uh, lotions and those sorts of things. When I started as a distributor for catnip oil, I had a lot of um, people who had started out as successful soap makers branching into making small batches of spray-on lotions and they met with disappointment largely. They found that the uh, catnip was not working for them and further investigation just about in all instances their formulations did not have any emulsion and their logic was that if you shook it up and sprayed it on your skin it was mixed in terms of oil and water because most formulations are either a water and oil or oil and water emulsion and um, they thought if you sprayed it on the skin then it would be mixed up and the active ingredients which would be such things as catnip oil, mint, essential oil, basil, terpenes, um, and so on would be doing the job and they did do the job for 5, 10, 15 minutes. They were seeking times of much longer than that, maybe similar to DEET and would always be disappointed in not achieving them. Thinking that the active ingredient that they were focusing on was not working and the active ingredient in fact probably was working what was happening was that those active ingredients because they are volatile they tend to evaporate very quickly they oxidize and uh, they soak into porous surfaces such as skin rapidly and this is the reason why emulsions become important but unfortunately emulsions are very difficult and therefore often overlooked. So what we're going to do is a little bit of a demonstration and on our left here what I've got is uh, some oil and water mixed and in this we have a mixture of some purified water, essential oils, terpenes, and carrier oils. And as you can see the oils start about here and work their way up. And in this layer we have a mix of terpenes, some essential oil uh, such as I believe it's peppermint essential oil, and um, I have carrier oils in the form of canola, olive, and coconut. So as you can see here, and we'll look at, the, at in depth a little more, it's a little bit hard to distinguish the oils. You can certainly distinguish them from the water, but there are lighter oils in here and heavier oils, and the darker hue would be the coconut oil, or sorry, uh, correction there, the darker hue would be the uh, virgin olive oil that's in there. Then what we're going to do is move on and look at an emulsion uh, that was done uh, about 10 months ago, 9 months ago. An emulsion that was done here that was probably done about 14, 15 years ago and another broken emulsion that is in here that is probably about 17 years old and we'll discuss what the implications of all of those states of uh, emulsion have with respect to a skin or lotion formulation. But first uh, I think we should just run through a bit of a review on what we know about essential oils. An essential oil is a concentrated hydrophobic liquid containing volatile uh, chemical compounds from plants. So they evaporate pretty easily because they're volatile. They also oxidize very easily and especially the warmer they are, the more prone they are 
to higher lipidity and uh, oxidization. If you use them full strength, they're often harmful when placed on the skin. For example, they can promote uh, sunburn because they're phototoxic. Uh, their strength can burn your skin. They can cause anaphylactic reactions and so on. And they don't mix with water. They're hydrophobic, in other words. So that's why we want to buffer them with uh, usually a oil in water emulsion and that has a number of benefits which is the reason why we are looking at them now. I'm going to uh, start by taking this oil and water mix and shaking it up as would be recommended by somebody that had just done that as a harm for home formulation and then uh, I'm going to set that one aside for a while and while we're doing that I am going to take a look at this one so I'm going to pour some of that into there and you can see it's clumped because it's been sitting for a while. Now we're going to take the next one and um, throw that into a glass. You can see that was a thinner one and as I just pour toward the end then you can see that the oil phase had separated from the water phase and if we look closely we can see that even after perhaps 15 years and I'm not sure if you can see this or not but there is a lighter level up here but clearly we don't have the complete separation between the oil and water phases even after all these years. Next I want to take a look at a failed emulsion and I can see here that over the years it has separated and failed at the top. Now I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this but just like you're familiar with seeing when you make chicken soup you can see oil floating around on top of the water. Now what I've done is poured it back in the bottle to make it easy to shake. I put the cap back on, shook it vigorously for about 10 or 15 seconds and this is now the result. So to sum it up, the importance of emulsion uh, speaks to more than just something relating to how it cosmetically looks. On the left and on the right we have very similar ingredients in terms of an oil and water mix and this is true for a lot of formulations and we can see that the emulsion causes the oil and the water to be able to mix together and then be applied to a surface such as skin in a more even basis and then maintain that because the emulsion has the oil suspended over an even area and, and this solution you don't want it to be commodogenic because that kind of suffocates your skin and stops it from breathing so we need to have a commodogenic formula which allows your skin to breathe 
and we don't want an oily patch on your skin and then some water that's evaporated. So the emulsion addresses all these things. It addresses by, it doesn't eliminate, but it slows the volatility which leads to oxidization and evaporation. And that's what you want to achieve if you're doing your own formulation up. We won't go into the art of emulsifying, but I know one obvious question would be, well, what about the cons of emulsifying? And that's often cited as one reason not to do it. Now, there are two main ingredients to achieving an emulsion, and the first one is blended into the formula, and it's normally a polymer of some sort, which is a fine white powder. And those are contained pretty much in all sorts of uh, products from food to cosmetics. So what is the problem then? Well, the biggest con for many comes down to the way the emulsion is achieved because you have to balance pH and that's what causes the thickening and the emulsion to take. And uh, an ingredient, like you can't just, for example, put in lemon juice uh, to bring the pH down or perhaps carbonated water to bring it up uh, because then those aren't suitable. So the cosmetic industry did come up with a compound, various compounds that uh, do achieve that for very little amount of money and one of the most common ones we can see here on the left and excuse the label which is all faded because this is probably 15 years old and uh, it was used for experimental purposes back then but never been used and this one is triethanol amine and uh, also known as uh, but, uh, TEA I believe it's called so TEA is inexpensive, used in a lot of cosmetics, and a lot of health food stores don't want any products on the shelf that have those. But fortunately, it's not the only option for achieving the balance of the pH and making up your emulsion. And over here on the right, we can see a food grade product. It costs a lot more in order to use this for emulsifying, but it has the obvious benefits of being a food grade product whereas TEA over here on the left isn't. So this one is L-Arginine. As you probably know it's very popular with bodybuilders um, as well and apparently a lot of people believe that it supports the production of uh, nitric oxide in your blood which is very good for all sorts of health benefits from bodybuilding to sexual performance and so on and so on. So that's what you would look for when you may see L-Arginine on a label then you know that it was probably in there as an agent in order to achieve a certain level of pH balancing which would lead to a successful emulsion being achieved in the product. We'll just briefly touch upon some of the topics we just illustrated and discussed and for a more in-depth uh, dive down into the rabbit hole you can avail yourself to the links which will be down below uh, to these articles we're looking at. Um, so we started with mentioning that we were recommending that you consider a um, polymer for your emulsion and it starts with that. So 
Uh, a carbomer is a form of a polymer, as you can see here, and that's your starting point. And in terms of what we know about polymers, are they are considered very safe, uh, safe enough that we build artificial skin for burn victims from them. Um, down here we did discuss uh, polymers and the pH level for achieving an emulsion and if you look here you'll see that uh, they do mention neutralizing agents such as TEA and so on and here they don't actually talk about L-arginine and the fact that you can use L-arginine is not as commonly discussed or presented to formulators and that's one of the reasons I thought it might be important to just bring that to your attention. Uh, moving on here we see here that uh, again with respect to polymers they uh, are being used for artificial skin building. There's a polymer mesh that is commonly used and so there we go. If we then accept the polymers, the TEA uh, tends to become more of the uh, the sticking point. And uh, take a look at this article in more length when you get a chance, and see what you think. Uh, there are some publications which say prolonged exposure to TEA concentrations of greater than 5% uh, could be considered harmful and uh, I don't think you would become anywhere near that uh, for achieving an emulsion and you'll see here it doesn't provide any benefits to the skin it's only used to improve texture and pH of a product so that was one of the reasons why we sought to see if we could get away from using TEA but still get an emulsion. That led us to L-arginine and here you can see um, some papers that talk about using L-arginine in a more scientific context and uh, this one here I found kind of interesting as I sought to try and understand it and it looks like there's a whole new uh, reality that can be opened up with respect to uh, emulsifying with L-arginine if you introduce ultrasonic treatment to it something I'll have to come back to and look at in more detail uh, and with respect to that I did find this graphic here to be interesting and that is brought up from the previous paper so take a look at that you might find it interesting on to uh, this paper how to adjust the pH of your cosmetic products and it looked pretty good in that it also mentioned something that I alluded to which is you really uh, don't want to be trying to use things like a lemon juice and so on for uh, adjusting pH and if we uh, go down see here for example they say don't use vinegar or lemon juice or household cleaners to reduce the pH don't laugh but this is the advice that you can find in some DIY recipes and in fact that is what has spurned this presentation regarding uh, emulsions is the DIY recipes that seem to abound and um, keep going down here you will see eventually that they do get on to L-arginine and uh, they even have a picture of it here so that will be worth having a look at and uh, L-arginine you can get it in practically any health food store which is nice and we'll leave it there because we've covered the three main ingredients 
what of achieving well it's basically two ingredients that you use to achieve the emulsion which in our case would be a polymer and the arginine and uh, I just also added a couple of search terms here uh, from DuckDuckGo because uh, Joe Rogan he uses DuckDuckGo instead of Google so why wouldn't I just before we close off I came back in order to retrieve the camera an SD card to start editing and it's been now probably a couple of hours since we did those last shots where we demonstrated the emulsions and I noticed it might be worth just commenting I doubt if you can see this on our non emulsified mix um, if I get busy and behind the camera here from right here about the thickness of the chopstick I can see the uh, light layer on top of there which uh, would appear to be and I'm guessing those are the essential oils or some of them or one of them then the carrier oils and then the water over here on the one if I recall correctly that was the broken emulsion we shook it up put it back and we do see some separation in here on the very top and when I look down on it I do see the lighter layer actually it's darker uh, when I put the chopstick in and mix a lighter one comes up from the bottom so again we do have some separation there so it does point to um, the recommendation of shaking even your emulsified bottle before you apply it to the skin and then lastly we had this guy uh, I think the layer on the top was just the foam bubbles that were there and we don't see any separation in that and so that's what you get when you have achieved almost the, the perfect emulsion the takeaway now being that any emulsion is better than no emulsion when you're putting that on yourself